the more you train it, the more you can use it, the more aware you become in everyday life, the more you can be in the present moment, the more at peace you'll be. Believe it or not, your automatic mind manages about 90% of your everyday life when you're sleeping or awake. Take for example when you drive. Have you ever driven somewhere, a route that you've done so many times, and f forgot driving there? When you get there, couldn't remember a single step? Your brain did that. Or brushing your teeth. That's the automatic mind, an autopilot. If you train it enough and go through the motions enough, even with archery, that's what happens. It allows you to focus on what it is you're trying to do. Automatic mind. And once you have it developed, the rewards start coming. You have an awareness about you. You see things differently. You are more awake, so to speak. And you can apply this awareness and focus to everyday life. It will help you to be in the present moment and at peace. This is how I meditate. Everyone knows how to throw a stone or a ball. It's in our DNA. We use our automatic mind or intuitive mind. I have taught this for years. When someone needs to check themselves or prepare their mind, simply pick up a few rocks and start throwing at the target. Then grab your bow and shoot. Why is this so helpful? Why not just trust an aiming method like everyone else? Because you want to be fluid and you want to use your natural gift, your automatic mind. The benefits are immense. Breathe in your belly. Breathe in, fill your belly. Belly breathe. Don't breathe up here. It'll stress you out. Breathe in slow into your belly. Fill your belly. Breathe deep. Try to release on the exhale, but you don't have to. Just maintain steady breathing, calm. Calm focus, don't care what you're hitting. Body mechanics first, fluid, fluid movements. Don't worry about what you're hitting. Breathe, you're training yourself to become more true. You're training your character. No ego involved. You don't have time for it. When I played baseball, you had to practice to be good. There was no time for your ego when you're out in the field. You just have moments to rely on your training. You just have a few moments to fall back on your training and hope that it all works out. I hope that your abilities fall into place. Your automatic mind can do its autopilot job. When you bring ego to shooting, you automatically want to aim because you're trying to compete with somebody else or some target. There's no reward there. So if you practice this way, yes, the end result eventually will be hitting your target every time. But you have to train your automatic mind and your body mechanics first. Nice and calm. Nice and fluid. Speed comes with consistency. So how do you shoot without aiming? Well, I'm going to try and explain that. But before we get to that, I see too many struggle with just how to hold a bow or how to put an arrow on the bow, how to actually hold it on the string, and then struggle on drawing the bow back all of this has to come together 
in one fluid process. So first, you need to train your body mechanics. And body mechanics comes through practice of exercise. And the exercise can be as simple as having something to shoot at five feet away from you. You have to start with a bow. It doesn't have to be a primitive bow. Although a primitive bow will get you a much tighter connection to nature and natural ability and training the automatic mind, which is what we're trying to do. Uh, you want something without any, without any cheats, as I call it. So you want something that doesn't have a shelf. You want to be fully connected. You want something that has a lot of challenge built into it that requires all of you, all of your focus, so that your automatic mind is forced to take over if you train properly. So to shoot without aiming comes through practice and first is body mechanics. Using the tool properly, understanding how it works. You know, I played baseball a lot as I was growing up and that's one of the first things we were taught is body mechanics. Uh, you, there's no system to aiming a ball. You have to learn how to stand, how to hold, and how to throw, and put it all in one process that's smooth and fluid. The same thing could be said for throwing a stone. And a lot of you have probably heard this before, but it is real. You're gonna utilize the same part of your mind to shoot a bow. Now, there's a lot of rewards to using your automatic mind, and I'll get to that in a little bit. So how do you do this? When I have my children or my students start out, I give them that analogy, and I have them pick up a stone. And without any set form, I just say, throw it at the target. Look at what you want to hit, and just throw it as if you had to, your life depended on it you had to hit that spot. And sometimes it takes four or five or 10 throws, but what you're doing is you're forcing yourself to use that automatic mind. And if you don't practice in that way, you won't activate the automatic mind. So by using a sight, by aiming with the arrow shaft or the point, you're shutting that part off to some degree. You want to be able to get to a part, a point, you want to be able to get to a point when you're fluid and you're not thinking about what you're doing. I'm going to reference baseball a lot because I played that most of my life. When you have to make a play, I played many positions, but let's say when I was an outfielder and I had just a moment to make a decision where I needed to be to catch that ball or to field that ball. And then I had just a split moment to make a decision on how I was going to move that ball to where it needed to go next to make the play, to finish the play. And that's the way I approached archery. That's the way I approach everything. But archery has helped me hone in on those abilities once again and actually go further with them. And uh, like I said, the benefits are immense that come from that when you have your automatic mind in a state of awareness in everyday life. So you want to become fluid, right? You want to be able to be one with your tool. You want to be able to move as if it's part of you, as if the bow as if the bow doesn't exist anymore and you are just pointing your finger and arrows are flying out of you, right where you're pointing. That's the kind of moment you're trying to get to. And the only way to do that is to trust through practice your abilities
take over. At that point, you got to practice body mechanics. And that starts with holding the bow properly. You can't choke the bow because if you do anything that's going to be uncomfortable to you, then you're not going to want to do it. So proper grip on a primitive bow like this, like one of my horse bows, is a relaxed grip. It's just this. Very simple. See? Really, you just hold it like that. This isn't even needed. Your wrist should not be vertical. It should be turned slightly, and the only way you can do that is by having a grip, a proper grip. See, now my wrist, it's not totally turned parallel to the ground, but it's turned. And what that does is that puts your elbow out, and it gets your forearm out of the way of the string. So you don't create string slap, or slow down the arrow, or change its arrow flight, because if the string hits your arm, nothing's going to work right. So when you hold it like this, my hand is now vertical, my wrist is vertical, and my arm is touching the string. And that puts your whole forearm in the, plate, in the way of the string. Not good. So you rotate out in the web of your hand, turn that elbow out, and you're good to go. Tilt the bow so you can see with both eyes what you want to shoot. It's the beginning of body mechanics. Understanding that this is what's needed for your automatic mind to work. You need to be able to see with both eyes what you want to hit. The bow needs to be held properly so it can do its job. I suggest everyone holds arrows in their hands. It creates more challenge for you. More challenge brings you closer to the goal. Next thing, controlling the arrows by the knocks. Why? Well, you have more control that way. And there's less, less to the process because this is what needs to get on the string, correct? So why not hold it there? Why grab it anywhere else? then you have to move your hand to put it on the string. I see some people do this, and that's just crazy to me. So, by the knock, pull it out, feed it through, place it on the string. Pull it out, feed it through, place it on the string. Pull it out, feed it through, place it on the string. You can do that in your house. Practice that over and over and over and over until that becomes fluid. What you're doing is creating a process in your mind that your automatic mind can take care of for you. So everything becomes fluid and all you need to consciously think about is focusing on your point of impact. So we're training everything to become fluid so the automatic mind can take care of that whole process while you focus on the point of impact. Does that make sense? So, again, control it by the knock. Feed it on the string. Try to do it without even looking. Drop it. Now the rotation, you control it by the knock between your thumb and your pointer finger and right he about here is where you have to rotate and feed it in between these two fingers so that you can come back to the string. Okay, so it's a twist, feed, pop. Now, another step is when, you, when you're feeding the, the arrow, you want to come through and then drop about midway to your knuckle. And that's a guide 
straight to where you need to be. If your hand's in correct position, this will guide you right to where you need to be and you're on point. Okay, so another thing to make it more fluid, pass it through. As soon as you're coming back to the string, you should be pushing that bow out. That creates more fluidity, if that's even a word. So, because if you don't, then you're gonna have a pause in your process. You're gonna be on the string and then have to pull back. So why not make it more smooth by going in as you're coming back, as you're coming back, right here, as you're coming back to the string, push the bow out and bring this back. Looks like this. Dave, you taught us to hold the bow and put the arrow on the string, but what about the rest? Okay, well, that is a push-pull sequence, okay? Just like throwing again, make the play. Everything's gotta be in alignment, because believe it or not, this is like your pointing system follow through. It's got to be smooth, fluid. The longer we held it out here, the more likely we weren't going to hit our target. We broke the fluid chain. We broke the moment our automatic mind had control and we should have trusted it. So how do you complete the rest of the task? Well, depending on your shooting style, which I can I shoot thumb, pinch, and split finger, and a couple of others, but most of you shoot this way most likely. See if I can get this to focus in. Like this. You want to have, you don't want to have this kind of grip. Not going to be fluid, not going to be smooth in your release. So you want to have as little possible touching there past these first creases just the just the pads of your fingertips so one on top two below and they're kind of pinching the arrow in place and maintaining string tension which is keeping everything there so that's the that's the string hand what you want to do is you don't want to curl those fingers in they're kind of just like hooks so they stay play, they stay put if you curl them in you're going to curl the string and your arrow is going to fly off when you loose it. The second thing is you don't want to use your bicep to pull it. You don't want to pull it in like this. That's bicep. You're also curling it and you're going to be limited in your alignment. Because you're never going to get back to alignment with your bicep pulling only. So the first thing you need to do once you have this figured out is put that elbow back and up. And what that does is <clears throat> by what that does is by putting your elbow up and back, pushing it back, that uses your back muscles to complete that task and everything fluid. So number one, you can practice without a bow and you can just focus and do the movements. Activating those back muscles, those upper back muscles, bringing them together. Pushing the bow out, bringing the string back. Number two, you want to have a bow that's lightweight when you start. Very light, or it's immediately going to be squishing you in between it. And it's going to be fighting you the whole time and you're going to struggle with having consistent body mechanics and fluid body mechanics. So a very light bow. I only shoot a 30 pound bow now for, for almost everything. That's my desired bow. You can shoot it all day. I have some shoulder issues and back issues. Um, I can't shoot it all day right now, but <clears throat> it works great for me. And I suggest everyone starts with a very light bow, especially if you're going after this style of no mind archery, automatic brain archery intuitive archery, whatever you want to call it. So, fingers on the string, like a hook, no curling, no bicep movement, 
push the bow out, bring the elbow back. You want to come back to a point where everything's in a straight line, okay? Straight across. It's your firing system. If it's not in a straight line, how's it gonna work? When you get to the point of alignment, this should be gone without you even thinking about it. Automatic mind does that. <clears throat> when you come to the point of alignment, the string should be gone. What does that? Your automatic mind. It knows. It can feel it. It does it for you. It releases for you. You don't have to think about it. If you have to stop and place this anywhere on your face, you're using your conscious mind because you have to think about opening your hands and you just broke the fluid chain. So don't do that. Start practicing. People call it snap shooting. It's all part of it. Again, how well do you think you can throw a stone or a baseball and make the play if you hesitated, you went fluid, picked it up, you're moving as fast as you possibly could, you make the play and you stop here. And then throw. You just lost all of that fluid momentum. You lost the, the, the you broke the, the kinetic chain that the automatic mind was taking care of for you. So don't do that. Pull it back, let it go. That, bec that comes through consistent practice of your body mechanics and it develops conviction and trust within yourself. Again, that's just one more thing you're putting to the automatic mind. So the more you can train it, the more you can put to your automatic mind, the more you're conscious all you need to do is focus on where that arrow is going. Got it? Okay, so what do you look at, Dave? Well, you ever hear the saying, aim small, miss small? It's, that's the truth. You want your eyes both your eyes, to be looking at the smallest thing possible. Focusing on the smallest thing possible. All right, here we go referencing baseball again, but when you're trying to throw at the mitt, the catcher's mitt, whoever's mitt, you're not looking at all of him or all of her, right? You're looking at the center of the mitt and probably a crease in the mitt, a spot, that he's spit in that's so much darker than the rest of the mitt. You're looking at something like that. Got it? And don't look away. And that's why it's important to trust your automatic mind to do everything else for you. So you can just focus at that spot the whole time and just watch the arrow go to that spot. So there you go. Everything you need is inside you. Practice. Let me know how you do. I hope this helps some of you on your journey in archery. You just broke that arrow. <gasps> that one 
ruined my arrow! <laughs> <laughs> oh, we threw off our concentration.